Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor. And welcome to video number 119 of the virtual stone carving apprenticeship. All right, shoot some points up in front. They go really fast at this point because I'm doing, I'll do lines along her folds, across her thigh. And because they're so close to the top, you don't have to take off much stone. And because they're close together, make a habit of, of deciding where you're going to work and then work in that area for a little bit. Whether that's, you know, how you do the entire project or, or whatever. Because what will end up happening is you'll have compasses that fit that area really good. And so you can have three compasses that you're just using model of three compasses that you use for the job and you're not having to trade around a lot and you don't get confused and you don't get them mixed up and everything but when you're working remember I told you that these compasses have a tendency to have a loose spot in them see how much that's the loose spot in this compass and this measurement is right there at it so I can't use this compass for this measurement because I've got too much. Just it just almost falls by gravity. Just it's so little. Now you can't generally just hammer on these and fix them. Um, you, you know it's supposed to, it's a rivet and there's there's brass shims in there and theoretically if you tighten that rivet up it'll work pound on these you're more likely to just screw them up so um, you're you're better off if it's got a loose spot is to just avoid it because up above it they're nice and they're they're a lot tighter like up here they're perfect and down here they're perfect they're really strong but right there in the center that's where they had a lot of use over the years because these are hand forged you can see where they're laminated they're done by a blacksmith and they take multiple pieces of this steel or iron or whatever they use and they lay lay them together you can see there's one piece another piece another piece another piece and another and they lay them together and they forge them you can see where this is all laminated up top here and they just hammer them together and then draw them out and make it it makes a perfect finger joint um, but these are probably dario came over in like 68 pretty sure because that's when young Dante's born he's a year younger than me I understand it and uh, so he came over in about 68 maybe early 69 understood it was 68 and uh, I understood that he brought these tools with him and because the way he told them to me especially with the point machine he says days they're very old they're old when I got them they're 150 years old he said everything he had was way back then so you know these may be super old i got some other ones that are so sharpened and worn down that they're all worn off and the points are all gone no telling how old they are but you'll have some and they'll have a give by just an easy spot right there where they just flop you gotta get a different compass back to work. when you're swinging i'm up on top here and so I've got one that's on top that's going to be very flat, okay? Remember, that circle, that plexiglass circle is going to be really straight coming down. It's just going to come down and it's just going to pretty much, once it reaches a certain point, it's going to drop and not really move a lot once we get close, okay? The other one's down at her head. It's below, so it's going to advance. This one's also low, but it's going to advance. But this one's really short here from the side. And if you're confused on which compass, how they're going to travel, go over here on, like, just on the edge. And you can just literally put your pencil on there and just let it draw. And you can see that if I go down, you know, just say I, I go down a quarter inch, it may drop a quarter inch. And it'll it'll travel, and in, and in that quarter inch, it'll travel forward a quarter inch. And so, if you if you get confused when you're swinging these and you're trying to see where you're at, just 
change the orientation and go over here on the side of something just to look and see how you're, because that's doing it the same way all the way around the sphere. That's what's so powerful about using these radii, the radii here with a compass is that this behaves the same here as it does here, as it does here, or even upside down. So if you're confused as to which line should be moving and how it should be moving, come over and, and just draw a little bit on the side. You'll understand, but it'll help you a lot because some of these points, they can look really confusing and you'll get lost. And you know, you'll think it's supposed to be a lot different. You know, if, if, if you've got something that's a really big number, you know, like say you've got, you know, you've got six inches that you're, that you're, track that you got to cut. If you have to cut that six inches, if you expand it on this, this uh, a dimension, you expand it on the triangle, it should be nine inches, okay? You're increasing it by 50%. But if you got a little tiny measurement, it may only change it, you know, if you, if you got something that's three eighths of an inch, or a quarter inch, when you enlarge it on this, it's only going to be three eighths of an inch. So it's a little, little small enlargement. So, um, you know, just keep good compasses and, and work, try to work careful and, and trust it. Don't second guess and say, well, this one looks like it should be a whole lot deeper. If you're, if you're worried about that, don't. Just cut it deeper later. So just go careful as you find your way. All right. Back to the top. The better you get at doing this, where are you going to learn when you point? And this is this is a lot easier to do with a pointing machine because the needle is going down in and the stop, you know, just, just you've got a, your needle slides in to a certain point and you've got a stop on it, so it stops like that. So it's very easy to cut and have the needle stay up an eighth of an inch or whatever. Remember I told you about drawing a circle around the points? Okay, it's very easy to do that when you're pointing with a pointing machine and stay up an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch on everything to give you some extra room and some extra volume. Um, especially if you need to compensate if the model is uh, deficient or something. This doesn't look right. You want to you want to amend the model, and that's what, what I've talked about with doing it in clay and then in plaster. And then if you have both of them available to look at, you know, if that's the way you, you work. You can look and say, you know, I really think she ought to have a little bit more volume, you know, like right here or maybe on her elbow or, or whatever. When you're swinging the compasses, you don't always know exactly where everything's going to meet as far as depth. You know, if you're working at, at this level, say you're, you're, you cut to right here and the actual intersection is going to be down a quarter inch. And you're trying to gauge that by how these radii advance towards each other to intersect. You may not know where that quarter inch depth or whatever it is, you know, that, that perfect depth. But what you will know, what you will be able to see is you'll be able to see your strikes coming together and getting tighter and tighter and tighter until they're, they're almost perfect. If you take your point, And when you, when you get really close to that swipe, when they, they get closer and closer and closer to where it looks like you could take just another little bit of a scrape or whatever to, to take it off, you can go ahead with your point and set your point. Then you can check with your compasses to see how it fits. Because if you're right on the money, it'll fit perfect. Okay, it'll, and all of them will fit perfect. Because technically, if you swing, 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 you get your perfect intersection. Perfect. Everything's like one perfect thing. You swing that, and then you go, you cut a point, you know, take your point, and you shoot a, a little hole right there that's, you know, a sixteenth of an inch deep. Okay, technically, you're a sixteen inch too deep right there. Okay, does that make sense? Just, just like if you cut until on your pointing machine and this is the problem the aside from not setting your pointing machine up right um, and having some variation in, in your foundation points or whatever and not actually stopping you know setting your needle and everything one of the most common 
fails with a pointing machine is that people will cut till the needle fits perfectly and then they go and they cut it they cut a point whether they drill it whether they you know with a, with a drill whether they use a, a machine chisel if they're doing stone you know instead of marble where they got to actually use a different chisel and they'll cut a point and now all of a sudden they're too deep you know they're 16 13 too deep and if they do that on the whole thing it'll reduce the whole job that much and that and that's it may not matter, but it's not what you're supposed to do. When you're, when you're swinging the compasses, if you can get to where you're really close, you know, and there's some points that, that are, are more critical. Uh, you know, like I said, if you're doing drapery, uh, if you're doing feathers, you know, feathers are feathers. They're all over the place, man. And you can usually hide a little hole somewhere because nobody's ever going to see it. Now, if you're doing drapery, like I'm doing right now, and I'm shooting on the fold lines, and I'm shooting on the high parts of the fold lines, where I'm gonna have lines drawn down around the stone, I'm gonna just try to do those to rough this in. If I go to that exact depth, and then I go, and I sink it in there, okay, now I gotta push that entire fold, I gotta do something, because I just corrupted that surface, I just went too deep. And you can shift it over a little bit, and hide it, you know, I mean, Easy way to do is to put that hole on the underside of the fold, and nobody's ever going to shift the fold. But if you hogged out a bunch of stone next to it, getting there, it may not be there for you to move. So, um, but when you're getting close, just chill out, okay? And you'll learn to gauge it as how close they are, and then hit it just a little bit, and then check it. And your compasses, when you do it right, your compasses all fit just. In clip right in there and wow that's pretty cool man so uh, but just you'll just just go with it man this is a whole different universe when you're swinging compasses you just forget at least i do i forget about all this stuff outside and it's pretty great because you just have to pay attention to this all right but learn to compensate if you're staying up just a little bit or you want to land right on that surface you know um, figure it out and, and get to where you know, obviously, if you cut and they're too, they're not deep enough, it won't fit because it'll, it, it won't grab. It'll be one side or the other because it's not deep enough. So, but, uh, if you do it right where they're getting really close, just hit it a little bit and try it, and all three of them fit, you're right on the money, and that's what you're, that's really what you want to do. All right? Back to cut. Before I go further, I want to clarify something I said in, in the previous video when I said there's just nobody left carving stone in America. When I talk about stone, I'm not talking about limestone, I'm not talking about marble, I'm not talking about architectural carving, I'm talking about granite. When we say stone, we, us, the granite carvers, the guys in Vermont, the colony in Vermont, and me and you know the other people that may be doing some of it, I don't know who they are um, because it just isn't money anybody left doing it um, as a as a regular full-time gig there's some different people that do a little bit on the side or they may uh, aspire to do it but there's very few of us that are doing work at this level um, there are a lot of stone carvers in America that carve architectural stone um, and I I don't want to start a pissing contest and, and upset people and cause cause strife. Um, when I opened my studio, I became more exposed to uh, these other groups and these other trades that carve stone. Uh, and um, in a nutshell, they summarily dismissed what I do as not being equitable to what they do because granite's for people that just do rote work we just do dumb stuff we're not smart and hip or artsy enough i don't know i don't get it um because i can carve limestone i can carve marble you know we've already got marble projects on the on the channel and limestone projects on the channel and it's it's really easy to carve it um i was warned you know, Giuliano warned me. I think I mentioned it. He says, no, 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 you can't just carve marble. You go right through, you'll push through. You're too strong. If you used to do granite, you're... Okay, spent years carving ice. Ice a lot softer than stone, a lot softer than marble. Before that, I spent, all, you know, literally my entire life uh, as a hobby, personal level, carving wood. You know, I love carving wood. 
And uh, so I understand there's differences in the media, depending on what you're carving, there's differences in technique, um, but achieving the, the form and the shape, that three-dimensional object within a mass is, is there's, a lot of relate, there's a lot of it that's related to each other. Uh, and, and you should be able to look at one and do the other, even if you're not accustomed to working in a harder, softer medium. Um, so I don't want to, um, you know, there are schools that have training programs and they pretty much focus on architectural work. They don't focus on figurative work. Um, you know, I've, I've been told by such a program that um, what I do is beyond the scope of what they can teach. Uh, and, and it really, you know, and it really is. This is something that's going to take thousands of hours to learn how to do. And it's not, you know, uh, a semester or two in class, you know, two or three hours a day for two or three days a week and doing an, an intern or an externship project. And all of a sudden you can bang out a life-size angel with compasses and triangles or do shell rock pitch or do finishing work or whatever. Um, they, there's, there's just a different focus. Um, and for the most part, the people that are trained in terms of architectural work, um, they're not trained, uh, doing figurative work isn't the priority. Uh, and uh, they're not gonna be producing figurative work that's face to face with the customer. Uh, if they do figurative work, the vast majority of it's gonna be far up on a building, 50 to 100 feet removed. And uh, you, there may be a different quality standard. Is that a good way to put it? You know, if she's a little crooked or cockeyed or disproportionate and she's 50 or 100 feet away, as long as she looks like a person, she's probably going to look just fine. So, um, but before somebody posts or complains that there's still lots of people carving stone in America, there are. There aren't lots of people that are carving granite. And there's not lots of people that are carbon granted at this level. There's a colony in Vermont, they're in Barrie, and that's diminished, you know, over the last, you know, couple of decades that I've been on my own. Uh, and I was part of that dis diminished. You know, I left, you know, I went somewhere else uh, and then ended up down here cutting stone. Um, so, um, and I, I, these other trades may offer a master certification. We don't. You know, I, I'm just a stone carver, I'm just a sculptor. Um, and the last thing I wanna do is sit down here and say, I'm a master sculptor, because that's when I get tutored by the stone. Maybe I'm good enough to be considered one, but you know, that's a goal that I'll chase until the day I stop doing this work. Um, because I will always see the, the, the failures and the shortcomings of what I can accomplish and what I can achieve. So, done with that. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. I wanna talk about points uh, because I'm starting to map this out. Remember I told you this is gonna look like the constellation maps, you know, where you've got Aries or Taurus or I don't know what the other different, I don't know, Aquarius, I don't know what all the, Big Dipper, Little Dipper, and they're just a series of dots and lines connected. Um, the way, and I talked about the break even, you know, about doing as much as I have to do while doing as little as I have to do because I'm gonna to have to estimate and create a lot of information anyways. Um, because I have to create 50% of the information um, in terms of that model because I'm enlarging it from two parts to three parts. So I've gotta take basically and enlarge, I gotta create 30% of the information on the final job, but that's equivalent to 50% of the information on the model. Um, and I wanna show you how I'm gonna approach these points because I usually you'll work from a from a, a known area and then you'll branch out from that and sort of network and and expand into it you don't just start shooting a point here and then shooting a point here and shooting a point there um, and so I want to show you because I'm at a point now where I'm, I'm at a transition I shot some points on top that are pretty easy to see pretty easy to understand now I'm starting to work down over the side of her right thigh and I want to point out what I'm going to shoot and what order I'm going to shoot and the reasons for doing that. So come on, check this out. Okay, there's a few points shot already. And those, those two lines right there represent, I've got a point here and a point here and a point here and a point here. 
those two red lines represent these two folds, okay? Does that make sense? And we'll start unwrapping her thigh, this area here. Now I'm gonna move down over the edge and I'm gonna shoot this point and this point. Now these points up here are relatively flat between them. And so I can rough the stone off like I did. This one's got some curve, so I left it crowned between them a little bit and stayed up. Now that we're going over to the bottom here, I can shoot a point here and shoot a point here. You know, I'm gonna shoot a point right here and then I'm just gonna kind of estimate this and leave it tall. Um, and I'm gonna shoot this point and I'm gonna do the same thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot this point first because as I evacuate stone in here, I have to come onto this point, you know, from relative, basically from this angle. And if I go straight down, if I sink here, I'll dig this all out and I'll ruin her, her, her leg. So I'm gonna to try to come in like we did down on the side for this wing, this feather tip, where we went in and I actually had to dig and go under a little bit so I could, I could just hog this off, you know, and I, and I, I need to, I will, um, but right now it isn't critical. But I went under, so I left all this mass so that I wouldn't interfere because that point is right here. And I'm within a fairly close distance of hitting this, this fold here. And so I'm going to shoot these points in from the top, and then I'll probably look at going down to here. And then I could even go down to here because I'm so close with that, I got a really good idea where I'm going. And I can start developing the contour of this leg. And we'll have a map of these folds going over her leg. And then this is all we can approx we can shoot maybe a point in the middle here, but we really don't have to. Remember what I said, if we don't go, if we go too deep here, it could be a problem, but we could push this fold up just a little bit in order to make up for that volume as long as we've still got volume above it. Um, and so it's important to, to understand where you can go with something, but we'll, we'll shoot this point, this point first. And once we get that evacuated and have that up, it'll be real easy to tip it a little bit and find this point. And then we've got those and we've got a really good idea on where her, where her leg is. And, uh, we'll be able to put that, put that leg together with a nice fold and try to make this fold pretty tight. So it demonstrates tension. Uh, as her knee is thrust forward, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot those points. Probably be back in a little bit. I blocked down some stone here as I'm approaching the point. The point's gonna be over here. Now, hitting it exactly there is gonna be tough. But because it's on a, on a slope, it's roughly on, you, know, you just look up there, and it's roughly on about a 45. So I know I'm still okay. So now it would be easier. I, I can see where, where these are gonna meet. I, I'm not gonna be over here because this is going away. It's gonna meet over there. And this, this line from the top isn't, isn't changing. Okay, I go down here and it only travels just a little bit. So I know we're going to be up in this area up in here. I can tip this to a 45 now and have a flat surface that I can go down in roughly square to be perpendicular to that tin and be very careful because uh, it's probably more like a 60 degree. It's pretty steep. It's not a 45. So I'll tip this and then I'll slowly work this panel back. Now you can get really aggressive and take stone off quick, but you can't put it back on so go slow.
take a look. It's just barely up. Not quite touched it. Maybe just a little bit more. It'll come over and I'll hit. I'm going to put my point in there and I'm going to check my cattle so I can right on that surface. Okay? Check my cow. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. Now I can take and I'll just round this over. You gotta be really careful. This is where I, you know, this is why I've been telling you all these boring things that just, they don't seem to make any sense. Tried to keep this on a slope where I shot this point because that's the way it is on her, her thigh. If I had dug a hole out around this and squared it off, I would have dug a big hole in her thigh. And I could take stuff off on the top, but it's hard to get down to it. And I wanna make sure to leave it. Now the next point will be Oh, it should be over in here, down. But I'll just contour this over down to that line. I probably don't want to take any more off right there, but uh, it still looks like I'm in good shape. So, just go slow. Okay. Sometimes you'll be able to look, you see those lines there, those dots there, those points should be, here's my point, here's my foundation point, and this next point is supposed to be basically on this line between these two, so you should be able to go down, all right in here, very carefully and pick that point up pretty fast. Um, we should be on that line. We should be able to prove it. Now, if you cut this, if I cut this to my points clear over here, something's wrong. Okay, I, I got to figure out what it is. But it's part of trusting the process because these, when you just are digging, these things are scary. And you start finding them, and they are not scary. We should be, look, the point should be on this line between. Points right here. Rub that off. Got that contoured a little bit. And you know, this is this is those two lines right there, just beside her knee. And this is what we'll do. I'm just going to continue putting some points in there wherever I think it's important, especially in transition, so that I can get the rough shape developed in. And we'll just carve the rest of it. When you're pointing these in. It's hard to swing and get the camera to see and everything. When you're swinging and you've got your points coming in, you know, however they're coming together, you know, whatever, whatever you're on. Say you're on this surface and you're trying to make these meet. If your surface is actually tipped, they're going to come together in, a, in kind of a different pattern. I don't know how else to describe it, but you'll have weird behavior. It won't. That's why I was showing you to, to take the compass and go past the edge of the stone. If you're, if you're confused, you know, put it in a point and then and then drop it to see how it travels laterally as it as it drops, whether it's gonna go, 
you know, to the left or to the right or stay very straight. You know, if it's very vertical, it's going to stay very straight. But if you're not down to horizontal, you know, where you're on an even plane, it's probably going to advance. But when you're, you've got, you've got, say you've got these two compasses that are coming in at a normal like this, and then you got another compass that's coming in like that. They're still going to meet, but it may not look normal, especially if you just shot one point next to it and you came in with a different surface to work from. Uh, and you'll, you'll see, and, and it, you'll get points like, like the only, I know that the, you all can't see the triangle well on that piece of plywood. Um, part of the thing about using plywood is that those that grain, especially on older pieces like that, it can be kind of hard in places and kind of soft in places. So it can make it difficult to cut a line, even if your even if your compasses are really sharp, they don't necessarily cut a nice clean line. And so that's part of why I was showing you to. You know, get close, you know, understand how the how the three lines are approaching. And when you're almost there, you take that swipe, and you take that swipe, and you take that third swipe, and you've got just a tiny triangle in the center, and you know you're coming together, and you know that's the intersection you're looking for, go ahead and just hit it, boom, and make your little dip. Then come back, and then check. Put your compass in, put your compass in, and make sure it fits. And you'll check all of them. And two of them may be perfect, and one of them may have just a little bit of flex, and that can that can go back to your triangle. Because if you take a, a if you take a measurement and it's literally the width of a line wrong, what you capture uh, when you or if you if you have a point on your model and say instead of it being and this is exaggerated, say instead of it being a point, it's a it's, it's a little bit long, and you measure on this end and one with one compass, and over here on the opposite side with another one. That little bit of error will magnify as you enlarge your dimension, enlarge your compass into the job compass, and then you'll try to put it on here and it won't fit. So work on getting really accurate. But when you've got something in there, they've come together really well, and you've got one that's hanging out, double check it with your old compass, mark it on the triangle again, go in and double check it and make sure because it may just be that it's it's literally the width of the pencil line wrong. But if you put your compass in the hole, you put two of them in and they fit perfect and the third one takes just a tiny bit of English to snap right in there and fit in there. I'm not talking about bending it half an inch. I'm talking about just barely flexing it and it grabs. That's probably all you need. This video is probably long enough, so uh, we'll wrap this one up. My name's Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor here at Carolina Sculpture Studio with a virtual stone carpet apprenticeship. Swinging the compasses. Thanks for coming in.